Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm gonna do another video here. Uh, this time we're gonna focus on uh, electronics um, and wiring. I know that's everybody's favorite. But uh, just wanted to give you an idea of what we're doing. <clears throat> One of the things that we have to do is we have real Lamborghini switches, um, but in modern vehicles, a lot of those switches are uh, multi-purpose. Um, they also might be uh, using a CAN bus so that the computer is actually uh, controlling things with the switches. Uh, again, multi-use. We're not going to do all that, so let's see how we go about uh, hijacking some of these uh, switch panels to, that I got uh, from, from a real Aventador. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so what you can see here is, is that we're building a electrical uh, system. Um, this is our ECU here. We have some other uh, componentry that I talked about earlier, fuse block, all of that kind of stuff. So you guys have seen this before. <clears throat> now, um, what you haven't seen before, um, I have showed you the switches themselves, but I haven't showed you the guts. Um, so you can see that on these switches, there's uh, windows, there's a, the lift system. This in case is the, just the front lift. We have a, uh, the stance cups on ours, um, so we'll actually be lifting the whole car with that button. The, we also have um, some other buttons that are not used uh, that we may uh, repurpose for something else. Uh, hazard lights, uh, so we can turn the hazards on and off. And then again, uh, another window. Now, it's really easy to kind of take these things apart because inside, um, what they have, if you look inside, you can see that there's just these little pads. Okay, so if we push on them, the pads go up and down. And then there's a little electric board that has these little micro surface mount micro switches on them. Um, and what we've done is you can see some of the circuitry that we've hijacked here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically these switches will switch to ground. So what we'll be using is we'll be using some relays uh, for the up and down motion. Uh, the motors actually take... Uh, plus 12 volts and for either up or down, and then you have to swip, swap the polarity to make them go uh, up or down. So if they're positive going up, then you have to swap the polarity for going down. So that's easily done with uh, some relays. <clears throat> the trigger to the relays will be the ground. So um, basically we'll have one side that's connected to 12 volts and, if, and fused, and then we'll have this button, which is going to shunt the relay to ground. And then that will take the window up. And then subsequently, this one will take it down. Um, there's some other features like a half uh, press on these uh, buttons. But we're going to probably uh, not use those. Um, and then there's this uh, nice little uh, interface piece that goes over the top. Um, we have LEDs down here that light up, so I've already hijacked those. This one comes on when the car comes on, so we've actually started our, our little uh, wiring harness. This is uh, just a little connector, and I got some uh, pins for that connector, which go on to these pins here. So we're building up our connector. Make sure you label everything. What we have here is heat shrink tubing that we print out on this Gizzy. I uh, got this off of Amazon, very, very handy. So now we know where all of our wires go, okay? So um, the other LEDs are for when the lights are on. So in darkness, these will light up so that you can see what you want to switch on and off. All right. So this one actually is quite simple. So uh, this is going to be the main panel that's down on the console. Uh, so this one would be great uh, and, and relatively easy to hijack. On the other hand, we have the light switch panel. Okay. So in this case, 
this would be a multi-use panel um, because look at all the circuitry. There's a little microprocessor right there, okay? What that means is, is that each strike of these buttons will probably do multiple things. Like you turn on your headlights, you can have different uh, parts of that. You can have the auto mode, you can have just the lights, you can have the lights in the parking light, or sorry, the parking lights and then lights and parking lights. You have fog lights, um, and then you can have a dimmer switch for your dash. So, uh, so anyway, this one will, uh, basically we'll have to replace this one because I'm not going to go through the effort of figuring out the CAN bus. You can see there's actually only four pins on here for all of these switches. Um, and these little micro switches here, um, we're, I have not yet figured out the circuitry yet to see if we can hijack them easily. If we can, then what we're going to do is we're going to hijack them just like we did uh, this one here. And so that we can just use this little switch panel where we can turn things on and off. Now, the easiest way to do that is to cut traces and then just use the switch capacity. Um, and then that way we can use this guy. And since we have four connections here, we can probably uh, use four of these switches, um, but not the rest. So anyway, still deciding what to do there. Okay. Uh, the other thing uh, is we will have about three or four of these guys. Uh, these are weather pack connectors that will go on the firewall and then we'll have the these are the receptacles and then we'll have the plugs that will attach to most of the car's uh, circuitry now since i have three or four of these uh, one of the problems is is that you don't want to plug the wrong plug into the wrong receptacle uh, because then you'll have serious problems so usually what i do is <coughs> excuse me is i find the pointer on this so it's this is actually what tells you uh, the direction of the uh, how the uh, connector goes on it only goes on one way and then what I do is I put the opposite pin um, of the pins that I'm using so I'm using male pins for all of my signals so then I'll put a female pin in here and that means I'll put a male pin on the other side. Now, it won't be hooked up to anything. And then that way, on this particular one, if you try to put it in the wrong receptacle, it will actually not seat or go in. Okay? And then we can uh, vary which position we put that in for the different connectors so that we don't get those wrong. Other than that, we'll also have them labeled. <laughs> So, um, so anyway, we're going to get to work, uh, and then the next update will uh, show you some of these systems on the car working. Now, the great thing is, is that um, I did show you that battery pack I have, so I can actually test things out here on the table, uh, which will uh, make things go a lot smoother. Because one of the things I noticed is, is that we hijacked uh, this guy right here. Let me remove that. So this is the actual switch uh, from the Aventador. And we were able to hijack that so that it takes uh, our I did it module and its switch. We disassembled that switch and we took the micro switch that was in there and we glued it into this one into the appropriate plunger. And now this one works. So when I push this, it'll start the car uh, if I have the brake on. So you have this little uh, start break here. So when this uh, changes state, that sends a signal to this guy that says, okay, I wanna start when you push this button. And so it'll crank over the car. If you don't push the brake and you just push the button, then it turns on the accessories. And the nice thing is, is I was able to fire up this panel and verify that we have uh, this thing here, this line here, which gives us our accessories when we don't push the brake and not start the car. And then this over here will actually crank uh, the car over and won't turn on the accessories uh, that shouldn't be on during cranking. We still need like 
the ECU uh, wired and we need the fuel pump and some other things. And so while it's cranking, those need to stay on. Then once you're done cranking, all of these come on. So you have your accessories um, as well. And then you have your start solenoid here that disengages after you let go of the button after the engine is started. So anyway, I hope this uh, gives you guys an idea of what we're going through to uh, get these, uh, these particular electronics and these switches to work so that we can really look, have the look of the Aventador on the interior. So uh, there's more of this to do. We still need to get like some interior lights and things of that nature. So we'll be hooking those up in the in uh, future uh, videos. But uh, stay tuned uh, for the next video, which will be uh, trying out some of the uh, systems actually in the car. Thanks for watching.